Hey guys, Greg Metz from Metro Knife and MKT USA. Today we're going to talk about heat treat. We're going to step out in a couple minutes. It's one of the things that we do in house that a lot of people send outside, and uh, we do it to control it because we deal with so many boutique steels. We want to all keep the recipes as tight as possible to the manufacturer specifications. So come on, let me give you a little preview. All right, so this is one of those steps that a lot of guys get outside their shop if they're not actually into forging knives. Um, a lot of people think about heat treating as kind of an administrative portion of knife making, and I don't think about it that way at all. Uh, heat treating for me is where the rubber, you know, kind of meets the road uh, in, in the blade department. Uh, you know, when you get to use these exotic metals, it's not like the old days where you get it to where it's visually the right color and you drop it in for a count of nine. These high performance metals, they have narrow windows of, uh, of their recipe that was designed by PhD engineers and they've come up with a really specific thing. A lot of it was developed for, for big money manufacturing aerospace uh, and semiconductor type technology, even some mold making. Um, and, and the knife industry being so small, we have a tendency to gravitate towards those metals and their properties. And some of those metals that Crucibles, uh, that Crucible has made uh, up in New York, some of those metals have been adapted and formulated just for knife making, but very, very few knife, uh, knives in the world are made with steel that was made for knives. And anything that's got CPM on the front has, has got a possibility that that steel was formulated specifically for knife making. For instance, S35DN, made just for knives. Uh, a lot of other things, uh, especially the European steels, they were really made for mold making and so forth. Let's talk a little bit about heat treating. So the process of heat treating is uh, where we take metal and we heat it up to a certain temperature and uh, we convert the carbon within that metal during a quench process to trick it into a hardened state. Uh, I'm simplifying this big time for layman's terms. You can get a PhD in heat treating. Uh, I use very specific recipes I've developed over the years of knife making that I've done. Uh, I've uh, talked a lot with the engineers uh, that make the steel. Uh, I'm on a first name basis with several engineers that make steel and people who are part of the steel making process. And I use those recipes and the ranges within those recipes to squeeze out every little bit that I can from, from our heat treating. Heat treating is always a balance of a few different things. Uh, toughness, hardness, and corrosion abrasion resistance. It's kind of a triangular teeter-totter if you want to think of it that way. And you can't raise one without sacrificing the other. So you try a good heat treat tries to raise all three points on that triangle simultaneously. You bring hardness way up and toughness goes way down. So we want to balance all those things for knife making. That's done here. So every blade is uh, put into some an Inconel bag. We've used some stoichiometry to calculate how much paper should be in there to kind of burn up the bag's oxygen without popping the bag. The bags are all made up by hand and uh, we put one or two blades to a bag. They work their way into the oven each morning. You can see the knives queuing up throughout the day here getting bagged for uh, tomorrow's batch. They'll get loaded into an oven like this and they'll get run in those bags in an oxygen free environment. They actually come out really, really clean. I'll show you some knives that have come out right now. These are knives that have just come out of heat treat. They've been through quench. They're getting uh, hardness tested right now. Go ahead and keep working. Um, they're getting hardness tested right now. Every goddamn knife we make goes through this process. You can see by the look on them, you guys, they're very clean actually, which means they haven't been around much, uh, much oxygen. It's a big deal. Now, uh, from here, once we verify the hardness is right, we do a uh, dry ice uh, pack on all of the blades. They sit in dry ice and get down to a, uh, about 180 degrees below zero. After that, we'll hardness test them again and uh, they'll finish up any draws they've got to do and, and then they'll work their way over to the second surface grinding. During the heat treat process, uh, these surfaces distort microscopically enough to make it not great for knives. So we've on purpose made this oversized a very, very specific amount. We've rough ground it just enough so that the edge doesn't potato chip. It holds its shape. If we ground it all the way to final thickness, this would all pucker and warp and crack and do weird things. 
So we'll take this over now and surface grind both sides to its final precision thickness. Then it goes in for finish grinding. Heat treating is, um, a lot of guys, there's some myth and conjecture about heat treating, but heat treating is really simple. It's a recipe done off an engineered specification sheet and it gives you a very defined river in which you can swim. Now how far you go to one shore or the other is part of my experience and how I come up with the recipes. We follow the recipes in an exacting way every single time for a predictable heat treat. Great steel with a bad heat treat doesn't do much for you. A mediocre steel with a fantastic heat treat will outperform a fantastic steel with a mediocre heat treat. We do this very expensive process in-house to control it. I want to talk about production heat treating for a minute. So, in a production heat treating environment, there'll be this big furnace, and I've got a 100 degree window to keep my blades in. And this big furnace, a knife maker will only fill up one little section of the furnace. And the furnace has got different temperatures at the front, middle, and back, and the top and the bottom. So on Tuesday, my stuff may be here at Heat Treater X, on Wednesday it may be here, on Thursday it may be in the back. And they're running that whole batch for where they make money, which is aerospace and big production, not little knife making. So what happens is, if you send your knife making out, if you send your knives out, you can't control that. And what you're relying on is these high performance metals going into an oven that has a larger temperature variance than the, uh, the, the, than the proper heat treat temperature for your high performance steel. So you gotta get lucky. When I did spot checking around the country for heat treating, I found that only about 70% of blades from well-known heat treating places all over America were actually in spec, because I test everything. The rest were not in spec. You ask why and you really push, you get an employee on the phone and they'll tell you. So it's one of the reasons we keep it in-house. Now, maybe other knife makers have thrown away 20 to 30% of their blades, or maybe they magically found the guys who just get it perfectly right all the time. I don't know but I do it in-house. Anybody who says it needs to be done in a vacuum is ill-informed. Uh, I, uh, you, you, you can heat treat the way we're heat treating right now, and with our secondary grind process, we grind off every bit of metal that's exposed to the heat treat process, so we get down into the pure, isolated, heat treated steel within the original form. Uh, it, it, it gets us an unparalleled consistency of heat treat and quality that we can really rely on and our customers can rely on. Um, do people break blades sometimes? People chip tips and it happens. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. I would say since I've been in business, we've made a lot of knives, figure about 12,000 knives a year on average for the last eight and before that, whatever it was. And you'll see probably 20 knives have come back for chipped tips or edges. Not too bad. Anyways, that's heat treating here at Medford Knife and Tool. Hey, so that in a nutshell is heat treating. Um, it, it looks really simple. It, it takes years to kind of put together your recipes and uh, play within the margins to get everything exactly where you want it. If you want a deeper dive on that, feel free to stop by medforduniversity.com.